right, Catherine? So you go ahead now and unmute. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Good. Yes. So good evening, everyone. Uh, on behalf of the organizing team, both the African region and Spain, I would like to take this opportunity to welcome each one of us to this Zoom meeting between the African region and Spain, both IBBM and CJs. We have had conversations going on at continental level. And at the beginning of this year, our two generates, both the CJs and IBBM, asked us to move beyond our geographical area to other continents and continue our conversation on becoming one to get to know each other even better. Uh, and maybe at this point, I forgot to say that I'm Sister Catherine uh, from the Eastern African region. Maybe at this point, I would like to invite Sister Cecilia to put up the map of Africa and briefly show us where we are present, where we are ministering. Sister Cecilia. Right, yes. So here we are, and I'll go from south to north. So let's begin down in South Africa. We've got a wonderful group there with the presentation this evening. Some of you there. We're in Zimbabwe. We're in Mozambique. And we pop over here to Mauritius. And then up to Zambia, Tanzania, Kenya. South Sudan, over to Ghana, up to Morocco, and up to Spain. So that's a very uh, lovely presentation of us in Africa. Right, so I'll stop sharing now back to you, Catherine. Sorry, you're, um, yeah. yeah. I, I just want to thank Cecilia for taking us through that. And maybe there are some people on the waiting room waiting to be let in. So um, I would like to take a few moments to just go through the program of, of today uh, that we are going to have uh, presentations from our different countries that we have already mentioned about. That is South Africa, Zimbabwe, Mozambique. There will be each, there will be a person who will be presenting for two or at most three minutes because of time. We don't want to go very late into the evening. And that is going to be facilitated by Sister Jenfield of uh, Mauritius. After the presentations, there's going to be a time of comments and questions. And Sister Marcy from Zimbabwe will take us through that. And that will be followed by a reflection and prayer uh, uh, that, that will be done by Sister Teresia Wamoyo on becoming one. And then we will end with a vote of thanks. I hope that uh, we are a bit, we are somehow uh, have an idea of what is going to happen this evening. And so I would like at this point to then hand over to Sister Genfif, who is going to move us through the presentations. Thank you and Sister Genfif, welcome. Thank you, Katrin. So I would like, sorry, 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 Genfif for a moment. I wanted to say that uh, we are aware that we have sisters in Ukraine and there is war in Ukraine. We have our sisters there who have refused to get out because they want to continue to serve in that country and to suffer with the people of that country. In honor of their courage, we want to just take a moment to say a prayer for them, just a moment. And we pray that those who have the power to stop the war will have the courage to do it. Thank you very much and welcome, Jenny. Thank you, Catherine. So as you are aware, each country will present something 
about the country where she is mission. You are all invited to share two minutes and not more than three minutes, please. I hereby ask Jacinta from South Africa to start. So Jacinta, the floor is to you. Thank you. It's for Thank you, you very much, jean -Vierre. Both the floor and the screen is mine. Uh, so good evening, everybody in Spain and in Africa. And on behalf of South Africa, I would like to say a very sincere thank you to all the various provinces and uh, regions and groups who have assisted us over the years with personnel and finance, which enabled us to do the work we have been doing and managed and helped us to get involved with very varied and tricky and challenging ministries. So thank you very, very much for, for that. Now I would like to give three dates. And these are dates that I want to, to indicate of something that happened within our province that made a big difference. The first is 1821, when Theresa Ball brought the Institute to Dublin. The second is 1833, when, when Theresa Ball brought the Institute to Navan. And in 1878, when the Institute came to South Africa. Now from that time, for many, many years, we continued as everybody else continued, schools and helping and social work and all the rest of it. But in our province, in the year eight, 1987, and that's a very important year for South Africa, 1987. In this 1987, we had a meeting, a province meeting. And in this province meeting, it was discovered, well, we could not continue to go on the way we were in a country that was socially, economically, politically disrupted. We couldn't continue as is. So the question put to us at that time was a question, it's a, not an easy question, but it was a very, very important question. And the question was, I'll just find it here. Yeah. The question was, do we die? Or do we fully live until we die? Do we die? or do we fully live until we die? So in the discernment, we decided, thank God, that we would fully live until we die. So many people coming to South Africa have said about the energy that's here, that's true. Now, it's very easy to make a decision. It's not easy to continue the decision. It's like throwing a brick into a pond and the ripples go you don't know where. So with this decision that we were going to live until we die, we had to do two things. One, we had to uh, get our lay colleagues trained, to take over the schools, uh, do all the stuff that we were doing. So in other words, we had to re-empower the people that we were I have been holding too low for a while. Now, they had to be trained, empowered, uh, school boards, trust, and all the rest of it. By doing that, we released the sisters who were in charge of schools. And they went 
to be retrained as social workers, spiritual directors, counselors, facilitators, and others. When they came back, it would have been unethical to put them back into the positions they were, or to put them into leadership in their province. They were because they were trained for something else. So it meant people coming back like myself, we had to then find our own ministry, be responsible for our own ministry, be assured that a Loreto would not be following after us. So we had to set the seed of the charism that will continue when we weren't there. That was a big thing. In order to do that, we had to look at where we lived, how we lived, and how was leadership. So we had to relook at provincials as uh, superiors, because that wouldn't function in the new setup. But Sorry. Am I finished? Inta, <laughs> thank you for your for your sharing. Thank you for the dynamism. Thank you very much. Now we move to Zimbabwe with Florence. Is Florence here? Mercy, uh, we don't hear you. Hello, everyone. Hi, okay, go on. Welcome to Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe region. The first sisters arrived in Zimbabwe in the year 1951. 1951 is a blessed year for us. The CJ sisters celebrated last year, 2021, 70 years since the first sisters set foot in Zimbabwe. It was indeed a memorable year, and it continues to be a memorable year for us. We are 51 members now from 15, 1951 to date. And as a thanksgiving to God, for what he did for us. Nine in 2021, when we turned 70 years, as a region, we said, what return shall we give to the Lord for such blessings? Hence, we agreed to open a new mission in Mozambique, where we have two sisters, already living there, one working in a clinic and the other one is a hostel mistress. We really feel blessed. And up to now, we are still filled with the joy, the jubilation of celebrating. And by extending to Mozambique, we really feel we are growing. Please pray for us, we want to keep growing into other countries. Thank you. Thank you, Florence. Thank you. And you have mentioned also Mozambique. Unfortunately, the sisters could, cannot be there with us this afternoon. We move on to Zambia. And one of the sisters in Zambia will talk about Zambia. So could Rosaline, Elizabeth, or Jane kindly take over? Okay, we will come back to Zambia later. 
we move on to Tanzania, where Sister Basilisa and Bon will talk about this country of mission. Thank you very much. Once more, good evening, sisters. Good evening. Yes, I work in Tanzania, Loreto Gulf, Nyakato. The sisters arrived here in 1998 and began the school. Now we have a population of almost 800 girls. We can't take any more, although we still have others wanting to join the school, but we can't manage. We are also blessed to start a primary school that has a population of over 300 boys and girls. It's now five years and it's growing very fast. Also, there is no space in classrooms, but the cry for the space is there. And the Loreto Girls will be celebrating its Silver Jubilee next year. We just launched it this year when we were celebrating Maryward. So we are happy, looking forward to celebrate our 25 years of service in Tanzania. And we are praying that we may grow because the need is there. We need many sisters, we need schools, the shortage of schools and other services. So thank you very much. There's a lot, but because of time, we are celebrating and thanking God for everything that he has done for us for the 25 years. Thank you so much. Genevieve, your mic, your microphone. Thank you. So thank you, Basilisa, for these 25 years in Tanzania. Now we move to Kenya with Gertrude Malia. Okay, good evening. Can you hear me? Yes. Good evening, Gertrude. Yes. Okay, I'd like to share a screen. Yes, you may. Um, can you see it? Yes, that's okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Okay, so I'll talk about, I need to go to the... Um, light show. My minutes are going. Slide show and then from the beginning. Okay, yeah. okay, yes, yes, okay. Okay, so I, I like to talk about um, this, the recent event we had in the Eastern African province, and that was the centenary celebrations where we are celebrating 100 years of God's faithfulness. That was our logo for the, for the 100 years. And the theme was celebrating God's, uh, celebrating 100 years of God's faithfulness, that is from 1921 to 2021. Um, I'm trying to remove all your pictures so that they can see what I have. Okay. Um, so the preparations began in uh, 19, 2019, hoping to do the celebrations on the actual year that was 2021. But this has we know got slowed down by the COVID-19 pandemic. But then they picked up again with the launching of the centenary celebrations on 21st of January, 2021, that was held at Mary World Center. Um, and the launching started with the Holy, uh, Holy Eucharist that was celebrated by Archbishop Philip Agnolo, who attributes his vocation to Loreto sisters. And then the occasion was also was also graced by His Excellency Uhuru Kenyatta, who is the president of the Republic of Kenya. He is a, actually a, a Loreto alumni in the lower primary. Then the rest of the year 2021 was marked with preparations and mini celebrations towards the climax of the centennial celebrations that was held on the actual grounds where the first six Irish sisters had arrived 
and led the first foundation at Loreto Convent in Songari in 1921. This colorful celebration started with the planting of the six trees to in honor of the first six Irish sisters who came. And you can see Sister Betty was there to represent, uh, to, to plant one of the trees in honor of one of the sisters. Then the climax of these celebrations was the Holy, Holy Eucharist presided over by Archbishop uh, of Mombasa, Archdiocese, His Grace Archbishop Martin Kivova, a good friend of Loreto and a great supporter of our province. Um, it's, these are just pictures um, of the mass. This was the procession of the word by our temporary prophet sisters. It was a very colorful celebration, really. Um, then part of those who attended, we have Judy there um, representing the general council. Uh, the sisters, I think this was the best part of the mass where all the sisters came forward to give thanks to God by dan dancing the Thanksgiving song, which was very nice. And then the true Loreto spirit was actually exhibited by the different activities that our learners presented at the, the learners that had gathered at Loreto Msongari Centenary. Later, a meal was shared by all who attended the memorial event of our province. And we can see some of the activities that uh, our peoples and children from the nursery schools presented. They had songs, they had poems, they had drama. And then for us uh, in Africa, um, a celebration is not, is not complete without the cutting of the cake. So we had a big cake there and each school received a smaller cake that they were able to take back to their respective schools to share with those who are not able to come. So what was the, what was the centennial celebration all about? Um, this was the, just a minute, I remove this, okay. The celebration of, of the centenary for us was a celebration of many things, of the great history and heritage observed throughout these years, the hundred years. We also saw it as a celebration of the legacy of Mary Ward that comes through in living of her charism and the vision she had for us and the society. It was a celebration of showing gratitude to our sisters, our ancestors, especially the six founding members whose missionary spirit was inspired by Mother Teresa Ball and those who have carried the baton from one generation to the next. It was also a celebration of the achievements made, especially as seen in the lives that we continue to touch and transform in our various ministries. But above all, it was a celebration where we really thank God for, for his faithfulness to our province. In conclusion, these six wisdom figures from the past, led by Mother Bojia, <clears throat> have continued to speak to us over the 100 years of existence of our Eastern African province. We truly continue to stand on their shoulders and on those who come after them, who came after them, as we strive to strive to live the charism by ministering to God's people in our diverse ministries. To mark this centenary, the sisters being true to the call to serve the youth and the marginalized in our society. We are planning to build a school in Kilifi County in Kenya. It's a very poor area in, 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 here in Kenya where many girls are, are not privileged to go to school. Many of them drop out or they get married at a very early age. So we really want to get there and see how we can offer quality education to that disadvantaged population of the young people hoping to bring transformation, not only to the lives of the learners, but to the entire society. And just to conclude with a quote from Vita Consecrata, we have not only a glorious history to remember and recount, but also a great history still to be accomplished. Look to the future where the spirit is sending us Thank you, Gertrude. Thank you for having us to live again your centenary. We did share in the region on your video, on the video of the mass. Now I call on to Mauritius and I call Francois Sanson and Josie Pontré to get ready.
Mauritius is a multiracial country which was colonized by the French. The latter brought people from Madagascar, South Africa, and Mozambique as slaves. Due to the Battle of Vieux Grand Port, the English took possession of the island. Some years later, people from China and Pakistan came to Mauritius to set up business. The inhabitants of Mauritius are a mixture of all these cultures. The Mauritian region, we have sisters from European, African, Indian, Chinese origin, as well as a missionary from Ireland. We all live in harmony as members of the same family, God's children. This year, on the 12th of March, Mauritius celebrated 54 years of independence. As we sing in our national anthem, we live in peace, justice, and liberty. I am of African origin with black skin and curly hair. I am called a Creole. In our electoral register, I am part of the general population, which means an all-embracing category, which just means that I am not an Hindu, not a Muslim, and not a Chinese. As a Loretta sister, I am at ease with my identity as a Creole in the community and in my ministry. In my community, I live with a sister of European origin and one of Chinese origin. Language is not a barrier. We shift from French to English or Creole in the course of a normal conversation. My mother is from African and Italian origin. My father is from French and Indian origin. When I was a child, I was not aware of the different skin colors or ethnic origins. My neighbors were all of different cultures. We all played together without distinction. I often went to watch TV in Indian homes because we had no television. It was only after independence that I became aware of the different ethnic groups around me. I joined the IBVM in 1969. It's a great challenge to live with sisters of different cultural backgrounds. When looking at us, people can say they are disciples of Christ because they love each other. Thank you. Françoise and José. Yes, thank you. Now, I would like, let us move now to, to Western Africa, to Ghana with Anna, Anna Veronica Omwanda. Thank you very much. I would like to share a screen. Hello? Yes, do share the screen. Oh, okay, thank you. Share. Thank you very much for the opportunity to share something about our mission in Ghana. Ghana is the first African country to get independence. And the sisters came to Ghana to run a school. And the name of the school is Presentation of Our Lady Girls. I have a photo here of our compound. You can see presentation of our Lady Girls School 
was born out of the courage to move in 2005 when the four sisters moved in to offer a holistic education to the girl child of Obuasi and its environs. We are four sisters working in the school at the moment. The school had a humble beginning of 18 students and two blocks only. It has gradually grown to a kindergarten, as you can see, the children at parade and playing to primary section, to JHS section. The school is well known in Obwasi and is highly appreciated by the community for its discipline, spiritual character formation, talent, talent development, and excellent performance in, in academics. The life of the school, there are a few activities we do in the school. And again, I'm going to show the photos. We have a strong club in the school. I call them young soldiers. And normally they match for us when we have an occasion like the visit of the bishop, like here was the bishop visit of the bishop last year. And here we have the bishop um, inspecting the guard of honor. We also have here they are marching on the they are marching on the sixth on the Independence Day, which was on the sixth March this this year. And one of our girls, the one saluting was the best commander in the municipality. We also encourage the girls. We have graduation for the young ones, the kindergarten and the JHS students when they complete, here they are. We also have activities um, nurturing the talent. Here we have judges in court. And in that ruling, the case was adjoined for two years. It was quite interesting. We have the, we have the young doctors and nurses preparing to to perform an operation. I have the Ghana police. There are very many. We also allow the children to give, express their cultural backgrounds. And this was cultural day. Here they are in their different attires and performance and the dance. The little ones there. The bishop visits us once a year and when he comes, he, he gives the sacrament of baptism, confirmation, and first Holy Communion, the, the photos as you can see, and that's the whole group last year. We also encourage the children to reach out for the needy. And here we give food, stuffs, and other items to the prison every year. We also visit the school of the deaf and dumb and orphanages, and here was the school of the dam and the orphanages. We thank God for the success of this mission in Obwasi, and we hope that we will have more missions. We have two sisters from Ghana who have joined the, the IBVM, and we also hope to get more. Thank you very much. And the last, the last, last one here, we were all excited to receive our new bus. We were all outside waiting for the bus to arrive. So this is us in a nutshell. And we thank you for giving us the opportunity to present this. And thank you, we are happy to work here in Ghana. And we hope that we will have more schools and missions in Ghana. Thank you very much. Thank you, Anna Veronica, for this interesting mission in Obuasi. Thank you. Now, thank you. So now we move to Morocco, where we have Victoria and Maria. Do you mind if I come in a minute, Genevieve? 
it's as this is going to be in Spanish, I just want to remind people about the interpretation, right? If you want, it, from now on, at least the next couple of countries will be in Spanish. So if you want to listen to the English interpretation, just go to the bottom of your screen. There's a little globe that puts interpretation. Click on that. If you want to listen in English, click on English, okay? And I think the Spanish speaking people know already about the Spanish part, but just so that you won't have any difficulty. Thank you very much. And thank you, Genevieve, go ahead. Okay, so I, in, I, I invite Victoria Suri and Maria Uh, can you kindly unmute yourself? I see. Victoria Elbicroft. Victoria, el micrófono, no te escuchamos. Victoria, por favor, no se te oye. Pon el micrófono. Bueno, ahí está. Ya. Empiece. Victoria, no se te oye para nada. Empieza otra vez. Esto es imposible. Qué mejor. Dios. No oigo nada, no oigo nada, qué desastre, Dios mío, Victoria, Victoria. Maybe Mary, maybe Maria could continue, and then we we'll see if Victoria ver, can push on her. Momento. Estoy llamando a Victoria. Uh, I'm calling Victoria to see if she can hear us. I, I can. Hello. ¿Me oís? Victoria, Victoria, no se te ha oído porque estás, estás... Se me va. Dime. María. We can hear you now. María. ¿Me oís? Yeah, Victoria, go ahead. Sí, adelante, Victoria, que te vale, escuchamos vale, vale. ahora. Sí. Bien. <coughs> Bueno, como os decía, nuestra iglesia es significativa porque llevamos en vasijas de barro un tesoro. Tenemos algo que decir y aportar a la sociedad y porque somos un signo y un instrumento del reino de Dios. 
Una iglesia muy católica y signo de comunión para todos. Los pocos que somos prevenimos de más de 100 países de los cinco continentes. Mostramos al mundo que es posible vivir en comunión entre nosotros, siendo tan distintos. Existe buena importancia trascendental en nuestros días y en nuestro mundo. Con nuestra vida aquí estamos diciendo a todos, musulmanes y cristianos, podemos vivir como amigos, más aún como hermanos. Cuando muchos se empeñan en conducir la historia por las sendas de enfrentamientos, de conflictos y guerras, nosotros damos testimonio de que un mundo de paz y de fraternidad es posible a pesar de nuestras diferencias de todo tipo. Una iglesia misionera al servicio del reino. El objetivo aquí de los cristianos no es hacer proselitismo, ni mucho menos, sino hacer crecer el reino de Dios en Marruecos, es decir, la justicia y la paz, la vida, la verdad, la igualdad, la libertad, la solidaridad la, y la compasión con las personas con las que vivimos. El gran servicio que nosotros estamos aquí es el de ser testigos de Cristo, testigos a través de nuestras vidas en comunión y de nuestra vida de oración. Queremos ser orantes en medio de un pueblo que reza. Los musulmanes aprecian mucho a los religiosos católicos, ya que ambos nos dedicamos a obras sociales y de promoción, sobre todo de la mujer. En Marruecos hay dos diócesis, Rabat y Tánger, a esta última es a la que pertenecemos. Estamos presentes un total de 31 congregaciones religiosas, 22 femeninas y 9 masculinas. En nuestra diócesis somos como una gran familia, nos reunimos para celebraciones, retiros, comidas y tenemos un grupo por el que nos comunicamos y nos conocemos. En este país los cristianos somos todos extranjeros, como decía anteriormente, pero queremos que nuestra iglesia sea marroquí. Por eso nos esforzamos en conocer y amar la lengua, la cultura, la historia de este pueblo que nos acoge y nos permite vivir nuestra fe. La sila es muy pequeña, 12 a 14 personas. Este año hemos disminuido a causa de que algunas de ellas se han ido a vivir a España. Celebramos la Eucaristía los sábados presidida por los padres franciscanos que son los párrocos. Viven en Larache a 40 kilómetros de Asila. También aquí nos llevamos muy bien e intentamos vivir en solidaridad con todas las personas de la parroquia. May I ask Maria to move on and perhaps move on faster, please? Gracias, gracias, Genevieve. Bueno, a mí ahora me toca hablar de nuestra, nuestro trabajo eh, como ayuda social sobre todo con las mujeres. Eh, por eso tenemos aquí dos fotografías. La fotografía de, de la izquierda son todas las mujeres que son profesoras o que trabajan en nuestro, en nuestro centro Canisa, que se llama. Canisa quiere decir iglesia. Y, y entonces... Aquí tenemos estas, este grupo de profesoras que en el día de Navidad, yo me llevé la sorpresa, bueno, el día anterior a Navidad, porque coincidió con vacaciones escolares para las señoras que están en nuestra parroquia, pues en el día de Navidad me dieron la sorpresa de aparecer con una tarta y me decían, María, feliz Navidad. Yo estaba encantada porque la verdad en ese momento mi compañera Victoria, querida Victoria, tuvo que marchar a España 
y, y en ese sentido para, no me, me hicieron no sentirme sola y además decían ellas feliz Navidad, cosa que en otros tiempos no, no lo decían por respeto a su propia religión, pero ya hay un clima, un clima de amistad entre nosotras, como ha dicho Victoria, un clima de, de que nos sentimos eh, todos iguales delante de Dios. Ellas tienen su religión que practican <coughs> perdón, con muchísimo con muchísima, mm, interés, son personas muy religiosas, nos dan lecciones a los cristianos y, y entonces también reconocen la labor que hacemos las religiosas eh, desde la fundación Mary World Cambia, ahora se llama Perdón, se ha perdido la, la foto. Cecilia, de foto has disappeared. But anyhow, I will. Eh, por, no hay foto. No photograph. Very good. Bueno, pues entonces, es que sigo hablando. Vale, bueno. Bueno, pues aquí tenemos estas personas. Hay tres que no se las ve ahora, que son Fátima, eh, Malika y Fatija, que dan clase de árabe, que es nuestro papel allí. Estas mujeres, las señoras son analfabetas, no conocen su propia lengua porque no, no conocen su lengua porque no, las, no han ido a la escuela cuando eran niñas. Y entonces ahora tienen oportunidad de recibir esta formación en su lengua. Tienen esa, tienen esa oportunidad de ser enseñadas por personas marroquíes que a su vez reciben un salario, lo cual es una labor social que hacemos con ellas. Bueno, y también hay otra, también otro pequeño grupo que se llama, otro pequeño grupo que se llama eh, nuestra, después de la comida, tomamos a veces el té y está allí, eh, Navila. Y ya está, no puedo decir más, decir que estamos muy contentas de poder apoyar a este, a este grupo de personas empobrecidas, como dice nuestra, nuestra eh, llamada de la congregación 2014. Y, y muchas gracias por la escucha. Ya vamos a hacer 25 años de nuestra presencia en Marruecos. Empezamos en 1997. Muchas gracias. Oh, thank you, thank you, Victoria and Maria. Just want to to ask the people who will come afterwards, just to try to to be within five minutes or even less. Thank you. So now we move on to Spain, CJ, and we are Pilar. Buenas tardes, encantada de estar aquí. A mí se me ha pedido hablar eh, de un hogar que tenemos para niños en España y me voy a ceñir a eso. Mm, mientras creo que van a poner algunas imágenes, este hogar lleva funcionando 40 años eh, el hogar eh, durante todo el año están los niños. ¿Se me escucha? Eh, ¿Se me escucha? Sí, vale, gracias. Digo que es, eh, es una misión muy pequeña. Hay ocho niños, ocho, nueve niños. Están durante todo el año, 24 horas al día. Y eh, bueno... Eh, lo que tratamos es realmente que tengan una experiencia lo más eh, cariñosa posible y que vayan creciendo en paz, porque todos ellos vienen de familias desestructuradas, muchas veces de padres alcohólicos, drogadictos o algunas veces también eh, familias eh, de, con malos tratos. 
Eh, nosotros, en realidad, este hogar tiene eh, una, un convenio con, una, eh, con autoridades locales y eso significa que por cada plaza recibimos una ayuda económica, pero al mismo tiempo también nos exigen un número de educadores y nos exigen una cualificación de los educadores. Normalmente son psicólogos, asistentes sociales, podrían ser también maestros y también esto supone una inspección continua por parte de las autoridades locales. Estos niños eh, van a diferentes escuelas del entorno. Normalmente procuramos que no vayan todos juntos para que se sientan más libres. Eh, reciben también visitas de las familias. Eh, son visitas, muchas veces tienen que ser controladas, supervisadas por un monitor. De ahí el número de los educadores, que a lo largo del año son alrededor de 12, 10, 12 educadores. Estos niños reciben también terapia de psicólogos y eh, tratamos de trabajar con las familias para que, si es posible, puedan regresar. Pues si es cuanto antes, no siempre eso es posible. Si eso no es posible, si no pueden volver con las familias, a los 14 años, depende un poco de la situación de cada niño o niña, a los 14 años, pues en realidad van a otro piso de adolescentes, porque aquí los pisos, unos son de infantiles, de niños pequeños, eh, de 6 a 14 años, y otros son de 14 a 18. Esto es un poco, bueno, lógicamente... En verano muchos de ellos siguen estando con nosotros, procuramos que vayan algunos días con la familia, pero muchos días eh, están con nosotros también y tienen actividades, pues a veces en la montaña, con tiendas de campaña, disfrutan mucho con sus, eh, con sus eh, monitores y pues también eh, toman parte en todas las actividades como puede ser eh, de... de eh, campamentos organizados por entidades locales. No sé, eso sería un poco el resumen y me voy a ceñir a mis tres minutos. Muchísimas gracias. Thank you, Pilar. Thank you for very interesting and beautiful work, or garden reward. And we move to your neighbors in Spain, Blanca, We'll be talking about the intercongregational network in Africa and Spain. Thank you, Blanca. Buenas tardes a todas. Os comparto pantalla. No puedo entrar, Cecilia, no puedo entrar, perdona. Para compartir pantalla. Ahora sí, gracias. La red África Europa Fe Justicia nace en 1988. Está formada por congregaciones religiosas, misioneras, asociaciones y personas laicas que trabajan en África y Europa. El generalato del Instituto de la Bienaventurada Virgen María se unió a ello en, la, en los años 90. Seguramente os preguntaréis qué hace la, la red. 
Pues la red nace del tomar conciencia de que las políticas económicas y comerciales son a menudo la causa principal de las situaciones de injusticia y empobrecimiento de los pueblos africanos. Y también de una llamada que Juan Pablo II hizo a los misioneros para que denunciasen la existencia de estos mecanismos. Es a partir del año 2000 que la antena empieza a crear grupos nacionales llamados antenas. Las antenas son autónomas y cada una de ellas determina sus objetivos a partir del plan de acción general de la red que se elabora en Bruselas. Actualmente existen 13 antenas europeas nacionales y una en África, en Camerún, y está en proceso en este momento en Mozambique. Aquí tenéis una foto de quienes pertenecemos a la antena aquí en Madrid. En la antena en Madrid, que pertenecemos desde sus inicios, lo que se pretende es un cambio de sistema, donde la economía esté al servicio del ser humano y de la vida del planeta, puesto que creemos en la interdependencia con todos los seres del planeta y en el respeto de la madre tierra. ¿Y en concreto qué hacemos? Pues elaborar artículos de difusión a través tanto de la web de la propia antena o bien de las diferentes redes sociales que las congregaciones religiosas y asociaciones que formamos parte de la antena tenemos. También se hace un trabajo de incidencia política y a veces lo que hacemos es firmar eh, denuncias a colectivos que de alguna manera están sufriendo o están cometiendo abusos contra la naturaleza o bien acaparamiento de tierras que no es lo más justo ni lo más equitativo para quienes viven allí, ni siquiera para el planeta. Y también desde hace una serie de años se participa en la, el Día de África, el 25 de mayo, se hace toda una, bueno, el 25, porque, el, perdón, la fecha del Día de África es el 22 y se procura hacer una marcha eh, en forma de manifestación, se elabora un manifiesto, hay bailes y estamos en esa coordinación junto con otra serie de organismos y asociaciones que, por ejemplo, aquí en Madrid trabajan para que el pueblo de África se vea con mejores ojos, reconocer la riqueza y de África que nos puede aportar y su múltiple realidad. Muchas gracias. Thank you, Blanca. Great. Thanks for this connection between Africa and Spain. Now I will pass the floor over to Mercy, who will continue the conversation with us. Thank you, Mercy. Hello, everyone. Warm greetings from Africa, Zimbabwe. <laughs> um, Now I, I want to invite you for some comments and some questions. But before doing that, I would like to invite Jacinda. Jacinda, are you there? Yeah. Okay, please say something. In, 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 so, sorry, I, I missed the question. 
Okay, you, you indicated that you would like to add something. So I'm giving you this opportunity this time now. To, to add something to what I said. Yes, you said you yeah. wanted, yeah. Yeah, I, I think I was going over my time. That's, that's, I think, the thing. And the, for me, the importance of when, when one decision is made, the ripple effect it has on everything else. We can't make a decision and say it's finished. And that was the experience we had in South Africa when we realized we had to be retrained, retrain our teachers, retrain ourselves and that brought back a change in the way we live community the way we dialogued with one another different places the way we lived and superiors had to be changed also so we couldn't carry on in the same way using a new method so it's easy to make a decision it's more difficult to follow that decision because every other decision that follows has to be different and changed. So I think that's where I was. It was the ripple effect of making an initial decision. And what follows that has to be, you can't use an, an old method for a new thing. It has to change. And that calls for a death, a death to one thing in order that another thing comes to life to see because sometimes we think we send a person for training and they come back and are put in the same position or uh, put in a in an authority which is unjust and it's abusive to the person they have got to come back and be put into where they have been trained and so that has to look at where they're living is it nearer to their ministry? How is the setup? Is that all the change of the mindset has to go on. And we had to do that. And it was very painful. It was difficult. It was challenging. It was life-giving. It was great. We were in a mess and then we were clear. And then we were in a mess again and we were clear. But every step had to be taken and we had a meeting every six months to see how did you do it? Why didn't it work? Did we bite off too much? Has to be changed again. So we had to do that, but listening and discerning, what is the spirit asking us at this particular time? We have to, we, this is us. We had to allow the laity to be encouraged to take their rightful place in, in Christianity and not to keep on what we were doing, even though what we were doing is very good. But we have to keep looking and seeing what can we do, do what is right and that kind of stuff. So, so that was the discernment we had. And that's what I was trying to let people know it was something different for us. Is that, is that clear? Thank you so much, Jacinda. Thank you for explaining everything. Thank you. It, and if it anybody adds some wants value. Me to ask questions, they're most welcome. <laughs> 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 Thank you very much. Let me also, Cecilia, you want to say something about South Sudan? Yes, that's right. Thank you so much. <laughs> yes. We, I'm going on a different um, um, point now, but um, we had hoped to have uh, South Sudan with us, you know. Um, now, for those of us who are not in the Mary Points region, we know that South Sudan was with Ireland and then last year uh, um, engaged with Ireland um, rather than with Africa. But anyway, when we were organizing this, we said, let's 
let's get in touch with South Sudan. They were delighted, but they're, they have a, they're under great pressure of work at the moment and said they're really sorry that they cannot be with us. But they send us lots of love and they hope that they will be able to connect on other occasions. So just so that you know that, that they're thinking of you and on our part, we send them a big hug and lots of love to South Sudan as well. And that's just what I wanted to say. Thank you very much, Cecilia. Uh, now I invite I other something? members. Can I say something else, Mercy? Okay, Jacinda. <laughs> <laughs> The other big thing that we're doing in South Africa is the Mary Ward Open Circle. Mm -hmm. That is setting the, sowing the seeds of the charism. Because that's the way it's going to be. We won't always be there. We don't know about religious life, how it's going to be. But the seeds of the charism, we need to be planting. And I suppose we are. And the Mary Ward Open Circle is fantastic. These women are, uh, women and men are marvelous with this, uh, you know, the freedom, integrity, joy, justice, peace. And they do things that are marvelous stuff. So planting the seed of the charism, to me, is as important as standing in front of a class and teaching them geography. Okay. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Thank you. So I'm inviting you all, if you have got something to share, if you have a question or something you would like to be clarified, please do so. This is the time. Or something you would like us to know. Do you see where you can raise your hand? Uh, um, there's uh, where the little reactions are. If you would like to say something, raise your hand. You know, press and raise your hand so that then um, Mercy will see who wants to speak. There's a hand up. Yes. Yes, it says user. Please speak. Oh, so please. I'm so sorry. I'm Katrina from uh, Kenya. Ah, Sister Kathleen. <laughs> my friend, Mercy, Cecilia, so many people I'm happy to see on screen. Now you see that we have, I just want to say our community here gave us a wonderful St. Patrick's Day today. So we have been celebrating, but I think Kenya and South Africa, God invited us on different paths. South Africa chose to live until they die, and we chose to let die until our Kenyans and other sisters would live. It was two different discernments. And um, I know at the time when South Africa made the decision, I wept because I felt something deep was being lost. But Jacintha knows that deeply. So I respect that we're on a new journey. I'm personally very excited and I'm a hopeless correspondent, but I'm, and I owe so many emails, but I see you know, so many people from Spain, which is, and Mercy's our friend, but of course we don't. So I want to acknowledge with appreciation all that has been shared. And I think this is a wonderful forum. And I just want to thank everything. It's coming through so clearly. Gracias, Sant. Thank you, Sister Ake. It's great to hear and see you here in this. Yes, I'm a disgrace. I'll have to get some of the young ones to put up my name. I meant to do it and I didn't. Next time it'll be there. Thank you. Mm -hmm. No, it's okay. <laughs>
Hello, Cecilia, you had your hand up. Do you want to say something? Well, I, I can come in again and um, uh, um, it was just as Jacinth, as you were speaking there, you know, about the keeping the charism uh, alive and the circles, the very word circles, you know, I'm just so aware that here this evening you have um, on the one hand, you have an aging population, and the aging ones were mainly in Europe and in South Africa, and then in the rest of Africa, you've got a young population. But um, but I think life, it, you know, life is such it's it's circular, you know, and uh, it keeps repeating in different. It keeps repeating, right? So what is happening to us now will happen will happen in other parts later on. But coming back to the circles, I think that is really important what you're saying there, Jacinta, because, um, and, and, and we are trying to do it, we're doing it in different ways. But I think it's one of the things that I see that we need to do is to get the different groups kind of talking together as well and sharing together the different circles, you know? And it's something that we've been trying to do in a different way here, um, from Spain with um, groups that Maria Teresa began after our last um, general congregation. But we linked slightly with North America, with the US, but I think if we could do it broader, it would be really good. So maybe you can come back to us on that and, and some of the rest of you where you have um, Mary Ward circles, just to see how we can get them talking to each other. Can I, can I say something on that? Thank um, you, Cici. Mm, I, I'll come to you, Jacinda. Let me, yeah. Mary Owens, she has also a hand up. Can I, Mary Owens. Thank you, Mercy. Um, good evening to everybody. This was an excellent um, webinar. The presentations were excellent. I just want to ask a question. The CJs, was it only in Zimbabwe that we had a presentation of contact with CJs? Or there, were there more CJs um, in the presentations? Like, for example, in Spain, are there CJs in Spain? And uh, gave a presentation on the home when she was talking about a home. It was Sister Pila CJ from Spain. Oh, I see. Right. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Si si te si te oímos Ana sí. Te estando a pilar de a todas. Yo tengo la teoría y creo que también me recuerda tú que nos tenemos que morir vivas. 
No me ha quedado por no me ha quedado. Entonces, eh, a mí me parecería muy bueno si nos podemos conectar con todas, pero vamos a empezar pasito a pasito. Primero con la comunidad de mayores de, de San Sebastián. Y a lo mejor, y cuando sea y todo eso, pues a lo mejor juntarnos, si no tenemos que viajar tanto, pues a mitad de camino en algún sitio, porque tenemos, hemos vivido muchos años y me ha gustado mucho lo que ha dicho Jacinta. Estoy leyendo un libro que estoy maniática con él. No sé si se ha callado. No, no, tú sigue hablando. Yo sigo hablando. Sí. Y se llama Aprender, Desaprender y Reaprender. El peso en la vida religiosa y en celebraciones y todo, hemos aprendido muchas cosas, pero tenemos que desaprender muchas cosas de cuál es lo que es la vida religiosa. Y con todos mis respetos a los tres votos, Jesús dice que solo se nos va a conocer si nos queremos. Vamos ya a dejarnos de... Bueno, pues eso, digo yo. Que me encanta vernos que somos estupendas y que me digo, de verdad, yo cuando veo las edades que son estupendísimas, dispuestas a salir a otros países, en Samos, Zambilla, no sé qué, pues digo, qué maravilla. Si nos morimos fuera, tampoco pasa nada. Digo, fuera de nuestro país, no fuera de... Muchísimas gracias. No, no, se va a haber una oración como grupo. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Catherine, are you there? Catherine? Yes, I'm here. Okay. Uh, can I end over to you? Okay. Okay. Thank you very much, everybody, for your contributions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Massey, for facilitating that session. I would like now to take this opportunity to welcome Sister Teresia Wamoyo, who is going to do a reflection on becoming one and do the concluding prayer. Sister Teresia Wamoyo. Teresia. Are you able to see the screen? Yes, we can see the screen. Catherine. Yes, I can see. We can you see are able it. to see, you can see the screen. Yeah, we can see it. Okay, sorry. I'm trying to okay. So um my reflection is on weaving our dreams and hopes like together. To, well, we, just a minute, yes? to, um, we, we'd like to see your face too. Wow, that would be the it's maybe you see my face at the background because I am you see my reflection. Okay. Yeah, so I'll put my I don't no, it's just go on, just go on. It's okay. You can see me. 
No, but we can I, see. Yes, I need it. Yes, I need the screen. All right. Yes, I'll put my face afterwards. Okay. Yeah. So I am reflecting on the image you see there is an image of a basket. So I've chosen weaving our dreams and hopes together towards one institute. The inspiration of this image that I have drawn is from watching my grandmother weaving baskets from Saiso. The joy in her face, sense of determination, artistic skill and trusting in the future always filled me with awe. Before the women start weaving, they dye some of the Saiso and then they roll them on their lap to ensure they are twisted. When they start weaving, they begin from the bottom and move up. The weaver does not know the final outcome of the basket, but what they do know is that it will be beautiful and functional. Weaving brings women together and it is here that they share, they bond, have honest conversations and plan for the future. They sometimes will assist in making the basket by not only preparing the strands and weaving, but also suggesting the color, suitable size and texture and what the final product might be. When complete, the basket is used to carry and store food, to shop, to bring gifts to family members and friends, and also to bring items needed at a wedding, birth ceremony, and even funerals. It is a symbol of love, unity, and compassion. As we gather today, let this image speak to us of our God who is the first weaver of our lives and that of our institutes. Our foundress Mary Ward and her companions continued the weaving and inspired others to do the same, making it possible for us in CJ and IBVM to continue weaving our present and our future. In weaving, we have to walk in trust and freedom. We do not know what the future holds for us, but we do know who the weaver of the future is. Let us continue weaving as we reflect and listen to the spirit speaking in our hearts and in the hearts of our companions. Through our sharing and having honest conversations, we will continue weaving in the openness and freedom and our God will do the rest. Jesus say amen. 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 Now, if you look at the, sorry, I want to get back here. Um, if you look at the, at the basket, you notice there are some strands which have not yet been weaved into the basket. That is a reminder for us that we are in the making. There are different strands. We are different people. You can see one of the strap is incomplete. What is that saying? That that strap needs to be joined with another for it to be functional. So we are also different, yet all one. So this is an opportunity for us as we journey towards becoming one and listening to the spirit who is speaking to each one of us to realize that 
though different, we are one. And so we are going to move together as a group, but as individuals. And to remember that none of those traps, even when it's broken, is thrown away. It actually brought back and joined with another stronger one so that it can be functional. And that's the reality of who we are. We have young and old. We have sick and well. We are people from the North and the South. We are people who are suffering and people who are well. But we are going to walk this journey together in courage, in confidence, and in freedom, truth, and sincerity in the footsteps of our foundress. Thank you. And let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The weaver of our lives, as we continue to weave, Creator God, sorry, the we Creator God, the weaver of our lives. As we continue to weave our dreams together, through our fears, joy, and hope of becoming one institute, we ask you to journey with us. Come, O oh God of compassion, of justice and peace. Come and dwell among your people who suffer pain and violent conflicts, especially the people of Ukraine, Democratic Republic of Congo, Somalia, and many other parts of the world experiencing violent conflicts. Through sharing in your life, your death and resurrection, give us the grace to be one with you and with one another. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Thank you very much, uh, Wamoyo. That was a powerful reflection. We appreciate the explanation and the, the prayer. Thank you so, so much. And I hope that we can get that prayer and that reflection. Uh, I would like yes, to say, we. yes, okay, thank you. I think I would like to invite uh, Sister Cecilia to, to invite Sister Maria, who is going to do the vote of thanks, Sister Cecilia, and to, to see to the end of the meeting. As we come to the end of the meeting now, it, we will just have a final vote of thanks from Maria Path. And so that you know that Maria Path is the CJ ambassador for CJ province of Spain, right? <laughs> Go ahead now, Maria Path. Vale, ya. Pues buenas tardes, hermanas de África y España. Y hemos llegado ya al final del encuentro y espero que hayáis disfrutado de este rato juntas. Os damos las gracias por unirnos en este encuentro que nos ha dado la oportunidad de irnos conociendo. Para que este encuentro se haya podido llevar a cabo, han colaborado como traductora Isabel Gortázar y como técnica Rosa. Les estamos muy agradecidas. Un gran agradecimiento también a las embajadoras de Mary Points y de Susana Rubut por la organización y sobre todo a nuestra hermana Cecilia. Que María Bar nos siga acompañando para que lleguemos pronto a ser una sola familia. Que así el Señor nos guíe.